continues. What next for the beautiful game of football in this country is our discussion on the program today. And you can weigh in by sending your messages on 22422. The hashtag is the Monday Report. You can also send in a video question or a video comment on the numbers that will be scrolling on the screen down there, 0742-961-341. 0742-961-341. And of course, let me also introduce my guests who are here with me. Let me start with those in studio. Joining me is John Bobby Ogola, Head of Technical at the FKF Caretaker Committee. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we also have Ali Amur. He's the chair of the leagues and competitions in that FKF Kiateka Committee. Karibu sana. Thank you, Ahiga. And joining us virtually is Lodvik Aduda, who for purposes of this discussion, will reference him as a former CEO of the Football Kenya Federation. Buona Aduda, I trust you can hear us. Yeah, good evening, Ali, and everybody else. E evening to you too as well. Uh, Aduda, let me actually start with you. Briefly help Kenyans understand for those who may have missed out on that announcement on Thursday, what a FIFA suspension means. Thank you very much, uh, Waiga. A FIFA suspension means that, uh, first and foremost, let us begin from uh, identifying who is a member of FIFA. Mm -hmm. The organization called Football Kenya Federation is actually the member of uh, FIFA. That is why all over they are referred to as member associations, mm -hmm. not the country called Kenya, not the government called Kenya. Having said that, it is important to realize that when FIFA does uh, uh, come up with a decision like it did on the 24th, mm -hmm. it actually suspended its member association known as Football Kenya Federation. And in that respect, therefore, we do not expect to have any form of sporting activities, you know, with any of the FIFA or the remaining FIFA members. That is to say, we, our clubs, our national teams cannot participate in all the international matches under the auspices of both FIFA and the Confederation uh, in charge of Africa, uh, CAF. It also means that our players cannot get the ITC to be able, even if they manage to get, you know, uh, 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 recruited by foreign, foreign teams, mm -hmm. they cannot be transferred to those respective teams. It therefore means that even our referees, you know, cannot go through the technical advanced advancement courses uh, uh, funded and conducted by both FIFA and CAF. So are our coaches. One of the saddest effects, if uh, this kind of impasse is going to continue, mm. is that one of our referees who has been uh, appointed to officiate uh, uh, in the forthcoming uh, FIFA World Cup in Qatar, Mr. Gilbert Cheriot is likely to miss that kind of an opportunity. Now, those are some of the effects that that kind of announcement, uh, which, which pronounced the suspension of Football Kenya Federation from its membership uh, at both FIFA and CAF is concerned. Those are very weighty consequences uh, with that ban in mind. And I have two gentlemen here in studio who are part of a caretaker committee that's smack in the middle of that dispute. I want to understand. And let me start with you, Buana Ogola. Did it have to get to this? Thank you, Mr. Maura. Mm -hmm. Yes. We have had caretaker committees uh, in, 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 in the country since independence, about six of them. And all of them have come about because of the mismanagement of the game. You find that uh, federations come in and uh, a lot of wrongs happen, which impact on the players and even the clubs. So and it's the same, same circle all the time. Like the latest situation, if I, if I may say, uh, according to the reports that uh, were, were out there, it was all about misappropriation of funds, uh, and then um, you see the government supports football in one way or another, and uh, 
that money is given out and it is not accounted for. I think it is the right of the government to come in and do what? And put matters right. So I think it did come to, the, to, to, to that situation. That is why we are in this state right now. Well, with the, 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 I don't actively, I'm not sure there's a case in court right now over the matter. So allegation of funds or not, uh, we are where we are. I guess my other question to you then would be, your committee has been advising the CS on the way forward. Some would say that advice has led us to where we are now. Any regrets? And, and Ali, feel free to come in on this one. Any regrets? Because your committee has guided the CS's decision, and now here we find ourselves with a suspension. Thank you, Aiga. I think uh, we'll have to do what we call uh, institutional memory. We just go back and see how many, what is the cycle, as Bobby has just said. Mm -hmm. In the last 59 years, eh, nine disbandment, six caretaker committee, uh, two FIFA bans, and now this suspension, one FIFA normalization committee. So Kenya as a country has been going through all this. This is not something new. And if I can recall, even we, we had a ban when Guinea was here already to play us. You see, so it's not something new. That but does that make it right? It does not make it right. Mm. So that is why what is, we're looking for solutions now, mm -hmm. you see, and long-term solutions, you see. And what we need to ask ourselves and all stakeholders, what are our challenges? Why do we keep on going back to the same cycle, you see? And the challenges are very easy. They're just for those four major points that people don't want to go through them. That is first, transparency in finance, governance, structures, you see, and compliance, you see. Once we put all those things four together, then we, we are okay to go. And why am I saying that? If you look the talent we have in the country and the, the structures in place, we cannot even capture those, those talents, you see. Today, uh, in, a, in, in, in a good platform, you are supposed to have a youth team under 12, under 15, under 17, under 20, and under 23, you see. So give a situation, imagine that you have under 12 in all 47 counties. Uh, or, or to give a, a, a good example, we have around 85 wards in Nairobi, 17 county uh, constitution. If we have a structured league of under 12, under 15, under 17, under 20, just in Nairobi, for example, how many leagues, how many kids are going to be active? So we're talking about structures whereby the entire country can benefit, you see. In, and, and to recall, if you look in demographic approach, look at the country. You have uh, uh, counties, or rather even province before, that they've never even seen a, a Kenya Premier League match for 58 years. They've never seen an internal competition, let's, you see. And the competition is just centered in some regions, so it's not distributed. So it's about structural issues to be put in place. It's about transparency in finance. It's about governance, and it's about uh, compliance. You see. Those were the key sticking points. Those are the key sticking points. That, that, that enabled your, your uh, caretaker committee to come in. And, and by the way, for the record, we did reach out to the ousted FKF uh, secretariat uh, led by CEO Barry Otieno, and they de declined to join us uh, on, the, on the interview today. We had wanted them here as well to give their perspective, but they will not be joining us. Aduda, did it have to get to this from where you sit? Were there any other options? Well, uh well, I think uh, we have different situations. It is true that before we've had to go uh, the caretaker way. Uh, far back as early as 1972, if I can remember. But in all these situations, we have not been in a position to outdo what FIFA says. Because as I did mention uh, earlier, the member association of FIFA is Football Kenya Federation. Initially, it was Kenya Football Federation. Now, one of the you know, requirements when a federation is being admitted is to do an undertaking that they will comply with the statutes and the regulations of FIFA. Mm -hmm. That is paramount. Now, once that has taken place, then all the member associations are also obligated to ensure that all their members, you know, also adhere to the requirements of FIFA as contained both in the statutes and in the regulations. Now, here we are. We have a situation at hand 
I believe that what is important and prudent at the moment is to deal with the situation at hand. Getting back to the 1972 situation is not going to help us because the situations are different. We currently find ourselves, you know, that FIFA has taken a stand. What are we going to do vis-a-vis -vis the stand that, you know, the, the, the CS uh, took on behalf of the government? It is really true that there are instances where we have allegations of impropriety with respect to financial accountability at the Federation. If I get my memory correct, it is only the president who has been arraigned before a court of law. The rest have not. We get to what FIFA wrote, uh, Mr. Jean, the director of our member associations, on the 11th of November. It was very explicit le a letter. Give us the evidence of what you have been saying so that we can make a decision on how to you know, because FIFA does not condone corruption or unethical behavior, mm -hmm. they would by now had come up with a normalization committee. It is also instructive to note, and we better listen to this as a country, that we are unable to make FIFA and CAF to violate their own statutes. If you get FIFA, the, the FIFA statutes, Article 19, I think at sub Article 2 and 3, they detest anybody that is not elected or appointed in accordance with the statutes of the member association. Mm -hmm. And the same is replicated in the CAF Constitution, uh, CAF statutes, Article 11, 1 and 2. It therefore means that the caretaker committee according to FIFA and CAF statutes, is perceived to be an interference from a third party. Now, that is what has led us to be where we are. The rest of those other things that we are talking about, we can deal with, you know? There is a procedure that we can deal with all these at, that are being said, which are, at the moment, because they have not yet been proved, are allegations. Now, we need to now look at ourselves. Having seen what the repercussions of FIFA's decision, you know, means, we can go talk about everything else, but the end game is that it is the player and the clubs who are going to suffer. Now, are we going to procrastinate and see that this is going, taking place? Mm -hmm. At the moment, the value of the Kenyan League is, as, is at its lowest. I mean, are we proud of this as, as, as Kenyans? Okay. You know? The next thing will be that even the corporates who are currently involved with football are not going to get involved because, I mean, you spend your money for what? Aduda, interesting points that you've raised. I want to get a quick reaction from uh, Coach uh, Ogola here. Uh, your caretaker committee, which was meant to usher Kenya to better times, according to him, is what FIFA sees as the problem. Is that a discussion you're having internally? Is that a discussion you've had with the CS that we do need to find a way to get out of this suspension? Yeah. <clears throat> that is a problem that is troubling us in the caretaker committee. And really, the sufferers are, will be the players and the clubs. And even if we play soccer, like Mr. Duda said, our players will not be able to move out and uh, our referees will not, will not, also, will, will not be able to go officiate internationally. So that is what is troubling us. We are seeking for a way out. Uh, I understand that a normalization committee should be formed to streamline things so that we get back to business with FIFA. We are thinking about it very, very seriously because the sufferers will be the footballers. and We don't want them to, to suffer. We want them to enjoy the game and benefit out of it. Uh, and I think uh, the timeline that we were given uh, is almost running out, and uh, we are really working hard towards it with streamlining uh, the, what the, the Constitution in line with the Kenya Sports Act, because uh, some of these things uh, are, uh, what can I say, are, um, 
the FIFA statutes and the, and, and the, Kenyan, the Kenyan law. Uh, they should be harmonized so that I think there's a, a flowing way of, of managing the game. Because I think uh, for the players to benefit, I think all this should be done. There are, there's a lot in football that, that, that's affecting the main stakeholders. But the bottom line is that uh, we are working towards that timeline so that we get back to the house that is called FIFA under that one roof. Uh, Ali, uh, there's a question that I still do not get an, a, a clear answer to is how did we get here? Because the last time we heard that there were going to be meetings between the sports ministry and FIFA. I think one meeting happened, we were told there was a second meeting which never took place. What happened? Because if those meetings had happened, hopefully we wouldn't be here having this discussion. Yeah, actually, well, you're very right. I mean, uh, what I'll say is maybe lack of patriotism among ourselves, Kenyans, because uh, uh, the CS, she's been working 24-7 in ensuring that uh, uh, everything comes in order. But, you know, we have to be active listeners both sides and we have to harmonize each other, you see. But in this case, everybody was pulling on, on, on different sides. Who's everyone? Your caretaker committee and the secretariat, no, uh, or which, which yeah, bodies are you these? You see, uh, if I, I'm referring first to the Starlet case, whereby uh, uh, the Starlets are already prepared, they were in camp, okay, then all of a sudden you hear a letter has been written. You see that uh, the FKF are not, they're not able uh, to honor that much, you see. So if there was concession, if there was uh, 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 an ask from, uh, from CAF, even from internally, uh, this is what is happening, are you able to go ahead with this or not? Because in such a, a, a national duty, differences are supposed to be put aside. So the, in, the caretaker intent was very positive, you see, up to the last minute. And that's why we kept the girls, you see, waiting in the camp. Up to the last minute, the intent was very, very positive, you see. So the question is patriotism in terms of passion for the soccer. If you're a former footballer and you understand soccer very well and you know the roadmap of a footballer, especially for women, what they go through until to make it. Because this was an opportunity for, for the girls to play in Alcon and maybe have an opportunity to play in a, in, in, in a World Cup, you see. And we were sure that most of them wouldn't have come back home. They'll have actually had an opportunity to be professional uh, uh, footballers, you see. So the question should ask, what is our level of patriotism as citizen of this country? You see, when we look at our flag is, where do you want to be? Where do you want to take this soccer? And what I'll say again, this is historical. We, what I usually remind Bobby, uh, when they slept in Abidjan, when they didn't have allowance and some good Samaritan Kenya took them to a house, bought for them mattresses. We know we don't forget what has been happening and a lot and a lot more. And all this boils down is between the administration and, and the footballers who are really affected because the biggest stockholders are footballers and club owners, you see. These are the people who are really affected on the ground, you see. And in most cases, they don't have that much say. They don't have much say. I'll give you a reference to the, the recently African Cup of Nations where you saw Roger Miller coming in, you see. We don't have that here. That passion is being diluted, you see, by mismanagement, you see. So the caretaker, Yes, they might not be recognized by FIFA or CAF, but their intent is just to put everything in order, you see, and for the benefit of everybody, you see. That's, that's, the, that's the, uh, the, uh, the, the intent of the caretaker. It was not, nothing to mingle with anybody else. Just come in, uh, put, uh, go as per the mandate, you see, put everything in order and let a new office come in and football runs again, you see. And, to add on that, it does not mean that uh, there won't be any negotiation with, uh, with FIFA. Of course, uh, the CS has a positive uh, uh, intent to ensure that they will engage. Will there be negotiation with the ousted FKF secretariat? Honestly, uh, at this point, I'm not sure if there's going to be one or anything. But as I said earlier, uh, uh, the CS office, you can reach it out anytime. The caretaker, we are open. You can reach us anytime. We listen to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aduda, there are football stakeholders out there who say it's very simple. If the sports ministry sits down with the ousted FKF secretariat and in a sense write a joint communique to FIFA, that would be out of this suspension sooner rather than later. But who will reach out? Is that the way to go if we quickly want to get out of this? Maura, we must be honest 
with Kenyans mm -hmm. if we want to get out of this morass. It is not true what my good friend Ali is talking about with the example that he has given of the starlets. The caretaker committee is not a member of CAF, and there is no way, therefore, that CAF was going to engage with the caretaker committee. It has never engaged with the caretaker committee. It will not continue engaging with the caretaker committee. Let us be honest when we have a national issue like this. Secondly, from where I sit, having worked as a, the first CEO of FKF, mm -hmm. I know the workings of FIFA. I know the workings of CAF. CAF will always, or FIFA will always write to the member association to find out how, you know, best they have prepared to do two things. One, there is the issue of participating, and then there is the issue of hosting. You must give a clear indication to CAF, yeah, if they are CAF matches, or to FIFA, that you are in a position to host if you are going to you know, uh, uh, host the first leg. The away team will have to give an indication to CAF and FIFA that they are ready to go and participate, and it is vice versa. And therefore, if CAF wrote to the association, member association, which is FKF, as far as they are concerned, there is a secretary general in place. So they did right to confirm as a routine dictated by the regulations. And therefore, I am not defending. Please let it not be misconstrued. But I am talking about the procedure, which we cannot twist, whether we take a hundred years, we are not going to twist these regulations to, but, to and, and, suit our circumstances. Aduda, is it fair for FIFA to expect its uh, rules will be followed to the letter if countries that are funding these teams have no say in what happens, if a country is concerned about the activities of a, of a national Wa Wahiga, team? Wahiga, yeah. that, is wh that, is where, that is where we have to take responsibility. We must take responsibility by ensuring that those who are investigated and found culpable yeah, are, are taken out of the spot. Now, we have had such situations before, even at FIFA. There was, you remember that, you know, the FIFA, FIFA gate, where even Blatter himself, who was the president of FIFA, Jerome Valke, and the horde of the other high-ranking FIFA officials were arrested and ran to court. Was the FIFA headquarters closed? Did the activities under the auspices of FIFA stop? I mean, we must be pragmatic in trying to find a solution to what we have. We um, we are not saying, I am not saying that there are no issues, you know, surrounding, you know, what uh, uh, the allegations uh, uh, being levied against uh, the, the past regime. But we have found ourselves in this situation. What we need to be labor on is how do we get ourselves out of this morass? You get. Now, I believe that mm -hmm. the CS under the request of you know, the, 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 the registrar or whatever, took a legal action with respect to the Sports Act. In the actual sense, she invoked Article 54.1 of mm -hmm. the Sports Act and disbanded the National Executive Committee of Football Kenya mm -hmm. and appointed a caretaker committee which these two friends of mine uh, belong. She went ahead and directed the, the caretaker committee to conduct their activities in accordance with the FKF constitution. Mm -hmm. Now, there has been a misconception that Football Kenya Federation was disbanded. No. The organ that was disbanded was the National Executive Committee mm -hmm. of FKF. Now, if you get to Article uh, uh, 21, I think, yeah, of the FKF constitution, it mentions the fact that FKF as an organization comprises or is comprised of several bodies. That's correct. We have, for instance, the General Assembly, 
We have the National Executive Committee. We have the Standing Ad Hoc Committees. Mm -hmm. We have the Secretariat. We have the Independent Judicial Bodies. Mm -hmm. We have the, the Electoral, uh, uh, Independent Electoral Board. Yes. Now, all these uh, briefly, are please, members Aduda. are mm -hmm. bodies of FKF. Yes, and it is only the, uh, the National Executive Committee which was disbanded out of all this. And yet the CS pronounces we, herself mm -hmm. that, wait, Wahuga, Wahiga, we must get to this uh, so that we have a, 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 a way forward. Okay, you know? I need to give the, panel, the other so, panelists a chance to respond. So briefly, please, briefly. Yeah, so that is what I'm saying. Inside that constitution, yes, lies the solution to all these things that we are talking about. Okay. We are talking about amending the constitution. How are you going to amend that constitution? Yeah, it is the General Assembly that is responsible for adopting or amending the constitution. You cannot amend that constitution if you are not a member of FKF. Thank I you. Mean, let's be realistic with ourselves thank so you. that we find a solution to this thing. Uh, thank you, Aduda. We need to take a break, but I want to give you Ali a chance to respond because he said you've not been exactly truthful, that your committee cannot be engaging with CAF. CAF only acknowledges the member which is FKF in this, in this case. Can you respond before we take the break? Yeah, thank you, Mauran. Thank you, Aduda. And, uh, I mean... And, and, and uh, yes, we, uh, it is never mentioned anywhere that uh, we, we want to be recognized by CAF or FIFA. You see, we are appointed by the Ministry uh, of Sports. You see, and nowhere. What we are doing is efforts on, behind of, on behalf of Kenyans to ensure that the stylists are playing. And I will, I will go back again. And I remember 2009 and, and, and my friend Aduda, he went to Zurich with his team, you see, uh, to file a court against Football Kenya Limited, you see. And he knows exactly what happened. They were fighting it. That fighting on behalf of Football Kenya, uh, uh, at that time it, it was in the, uh, what do you call it? So the, the sports register was not there. It was in the uh, uh, Register of Associations, you see. And, and that was compliant that Aduda was fighting for by then, you see against a limited company. And FIFA recognized the limited company, you see, and which led to a ban. And, and I, li I liked his patriotism by then. There was that passion. And, and, and today, yes, we can be hiding before, behind FIFA and CAF, but the real element, the real cancer is internal. I, I never heard Aduda talking about structures, talking about compliance, systems, and everything. What I'm hearing is about neck disbandment, uh, 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 committees, what I want to hear is solutions in terms of is football distributed? Are the players in the right place? We're looking for long-term solutions, not administrative solutions. What we are talking about most is uh, looking at as, as administrative. Let's look at uh, 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 the player who the contracts are, need, are not in order. Let's look at, uh, 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 and I'll give you a very good example, you see, uh, uh, whereby uh, a player uh, uh, has been transferred or rather is being bought by a different team, mm. you see. And the team wants to pay the club money. What we are coming to find out is name of individuals are being sent as account numbers. So the other team cannot pay, you see. They cannot pay because uh, uh, on the other country, say we cannot pay an individual uh, on behalf of a team. So such kind of hiccups. We need to look at what are the real actual element in football, not on the top layer. The issues are from down there. You see, and I wish you could PowerPoint it. I'll show you, I'll show Aduda the demographics of football distribution, you see. And I came all the time to tell you there are teams which have never even watched a KPL club playing, you see. Those are the issues I was looking into. Those are the discussion that the caretaker committee is looking into. How can we ensure that football is at the grassroots? Okay. Not because recognized by CAF or FIFA, I agree. They don't recognize us, but we have to know FIFA is not above Kenyan law. First, it's Kenyan law, then the FIFA comes in. That is the respect that we should earn as country, as patriotism, you see. First, it's Kenyan law. Even in the constitution of uh, 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 the KFF, first, it's Kenyan law. Then the other things will follow. You see. Okay. Okay, you've Thank made you. your point, and I know uh, John Bobby Ogola also wants to speak. I'll give him a chance to do so when we come back after this break. Really, very interesting discussion we're having. It's sad that we're having it in the midst of a FIFA suspension. Some say it's necessary to get the kind of football we want. Others say we need to follow FIFA's rules. 
FIFA CAF, they stick to the rules and uh, Kenya has no choice but to adhere to them. Somebody here, no name, you say, why is it Kenya being suspended, okay, day in, day out, I'm not sure that's fully accurate. Where are our politicians not commenting on this when, they, when it impacts on our football quite a bit. Okay, that's an interesting message there. And others are saying a very important discussion that you're having this evening on the Monday Report. Keep sending in your feedback. Hashtag Monday Report. SMS line 22422. I hope you're also sending in your video comments. We'll keep sharing that number and I'll be taking a few of them on the other side. Stay with us. We'll be right back.